Hello, my name is Igor and welcome to my tech fan. And I have a new filament dryer for the testing. And this is Erewhon Snail filament dry box. And this product is sent to me by the Erewhon in exchange for a review. Now, just a few words, uh, why do we need a filament dryer? Well, filaments can absorb moisture from the air and this may have a negative effect on CD printing. And from those most popular filament types, let's say the nylon is the most sensitive to this and at hardest for drying and it requires at least 70 degrees Celsius uh, to dry it in some normal time. Uh, then let's say PETG and it can be dried even on 50 degrees Celsius. Uh, then let's say TPU and at the end maybe PLA and ABS, they are not too sensitive to this. Most of my PLA is stored on open air, but of course it depends where do you live. Uh, and also you can actually uh, save some very old uh, PLA filaments. Uh, if you notice it is very brittle and you may save it by drying in some kind of filament dryer. Uh, about the uh, specification of this product, uh, I already checked uh, the temperature on level 1 is between 40 and 45 degrees Celsius. On level 3 it is between 50 and 55 degrees Celsius. They claim it is an ultra quiet uh, dryer and this is something I will check and I will compare the results with uh, other filament dryers. And also they claim that it will heat up uh, quickly and equally and uh, it has integrated a fan. Uh, but let's unbox it and then we will analyze it a little bit better. The box is empty, so probably we have a few more things inside. Before I open it, I can see here the thermometer and the humidity meter. As you can see here in this room, now it is 23 degrees Celsius and 47% is the relative humidity. So probably this meter uses its own battery. This is the power adapter and output is 24 volts, 2 amperes. So inside we have some silica gear, there is a user manual and these are some rollers properly for the holding the spool. This thermal humidity meter used uh, an LR44 battery and we have one spare battery included in the pack. This is the connection for the power cable and it has rubber legs. Oh, what's inside? Hmm, we can open it to get more airflow. Or what is this? Well, Eagle from the future is always smarter, so there's a space for the desiccant. And this is how it looks inside. So uh, we have this heating plate. Uh, there is the input for the power. I can see the wires. This is some small mainboard, and I can see some. Uh, it's axial fan, so probably it sucks the air from here and blow it in this direction. Unfortunately, there is no thermal insulation inside. Let's see how many exits we have for the filament. And we have some very short teflon tube. What are these? Uh huh. But why two? <laughs> probably we have two exits here for the design, because this is the snail. <laughs> so basically, we can have an exit here and here for the filament and we can place this short teflon tube as a guide here i want to insert this uh, bulb bearings and uh, roller inside but i think one pipe is missing i have only one there is no packaging list but i'm sure that i should have two of these uh, so i have to improvise the length is 77 millimeters and the diameter is uh, 8 millimeters in minus because it has to go inside this uh, 8mm bar bearings. Well, I have this 8mm in diameter hardened shaft, so I will just cut it on the proper length and uh, I will use this. Interesting in user manual, I cannot find the information about size of the spool, only that it supports uh, one kilogram or half kilogram uh, filament volume. So 
So let's try to measure it somehow. Unfortunately, I cannot go down with this caliper to measure it, but I'll try to measure the distance now between these two bearings. Try not to move them because they may fall down. But it looks like the distance now is uh, 69 millimeters, but uh, there is also a thickness of this wall, approximately one millimeter. So uh, it looks like around 67 millimeters is the maximum width of the spool. I have this plate which is approximately 68 millimeters. And almost, so uh, approximately 67 millimeters is the thickness of the spool, the maximum. This means no chance I can dry this uh, 90 millimeter wide filament. This one is only 50 millimeters in thickness, but I can check the diameter. Okay, it fits perfectly. So 20 centimeters without any problems in diameter. I'm just curious about this thickness. This is the most common size of the spool. 63 millimeters. It's time to turn it on, but here you can see the length of this cable. The length of the cord is uh, one and a half meter if I measure it from here. But first I want to take off this foil. I don't need this additional thermal insulation. And basically we have only one button. That's level 1, level 2 and level 3. And it's turned off now. First feeling, yes, I can confirm it is very very quiet. Let's measure the noise. It's on a maximum when it's heating up and the distance from the sound level meter is exactly half meters. And I will be quiet now to see the value. Approximately 31.5 decibels. So this means this is one of the quietest film dryer which includes the fan. And it's time for my regular sponge test. Uh, this is the sponge for cleaning the soldering tip. And now we add exactly 2 ml of water. I will measure the weight. And I will start with the drying. And uh, I will measure the weight after half hours and after one hour. And uh, this data will be comparable with uh, those results which I did earlier. And I'll follow the temperature and the humidity with this DHD22 humidity and uh, thermometer. And I will show you the results later in this video. But first I have to insert the desiccant. I cannot turn it completely upside down because the rollers will fall out. Zero point six seven two grams is the weight of the dry sponge. I'm adding exactly two milliliters of water. Two point six six five grams. It will be approximately the middle of this uh, area. And I'm starting with the drying setting to maximum and zeroing the value clear output and from now i'm collecting the data every 10 seconds and then i will process them in the excel table looks like i have to change the battery because sometimes the screen disappears uh, after approximately 15 minutes uh, the temperature inside is uh, 46 degrees celsius and 49 is the relative humidity according to this sensor is 43 and 78 percent is the relative humidity the temperature is quite closed but humidity is different of course the sensors are not exactly on the same place but definitely i have to change the battery when i finish this experiment now after exactly half hours i can see that the temperature inside is 52.4 degrees celsius according to my sensor according to this one is 48.3 but uh, according to specification it should be between 50 and 55 so according to this it's correct now let's measure the sponge and now we place it back 
2.016 approximately 7 more minutes uh, and the temperature is 54.7 degrees celsius according to my sensor according to integrated is 50.2 but anyway it can reach the temperatures given in specifications or level 3 between 50 and 55 degrees celsius one hour passed and I will turn off the filament dryer and uh, I will close it and I will record maybe 10 more minutes to record some drying process 1.181 I collected some cooling data, 10 more minutes, and I, I think it's time to process the numbers. And this is the result of that sponge drying test. You can see after 30 minutes it removed approximately 33% of the water and 75% after one hour. What is this good for? You can compare that on my website. And this page is always up to date. When I have a new film and dry for the test, it will be added here. And now let's analyze the recorded temperatures and relative humidity. Uh, let's start with the temperature. As you can see, after approximately 20 minutes, it reached uh, 50 degrees Celsius. Uh, here it was open for 30 minutes measuring. And then the maximum was approximately uh, 55 degrees Celsius. And here uh, I stopped the experiment and this is basically the cooling process. Very interesting to analyze the relative humidity. So as you can see, uh, it looks like the moisture stuck inside the box. And here when I open it for 30 minute measuring, I let out the moisture, most of it. And then again with the 60 minutes measuring. But don't worry, with filament drying, we don't have suddenly this big amount of the water in the air. And this Excel table is downloadable from my website. The link is in the description. And now let's move to the next experiment. This is my PETG drying test, which I repeat sometimes in filament dryer review videos. I'm placing 10 meters of filament in water for overnight. And next day I will do some test prints before and after drying. This is a stringing test with two towers. And uh, now I'm printing with this wet filament and then I will dry it and reprint the same G-code again. Oh, I went out for a few minutes and <laughs> uh, interesting results. So I never saw this kind of stringing yet. So this is really wet, we will see if we can dry it or not. Printing is finished and I will unload the filament now. And now let's dry it. And just in case I will mark this with number one. And before I insert this filament for drying I have to do a few things. First I have to replace the battery and it's good that they sp send a spare one. And it's working. Another thing I want to do is to measure the temperature of the heating plate because uh, if I will place this inside this is not on the spool and I'm afraid that it will touch this heating plate and uh, it may be too much for this PETG. This is the sensor and I'm gluing it somewhere in the middle of this plate. Now even after a few minutes it's already on 84 degrees Celsius and it's still heating up. So I believe that it will be very near 90 degrees Celsius and that's too much for this PETG. And that's why you should follow this recommendation table for the different filament types. The small square means the level of the heating because not the 45 degree will be a lot for the PLA but the temperature of the heating plate and the bottom of the spool is very near that uh, heating temperature. Now after approximately 2 hours it's on a half way and I will rotate it 180 degrees. One more hour of drying but this is the view through thermal camera. And this heated curve is actually a hot air from the fan. And now a little bit more than 4 hours of drying should be enough. Let's see. 
okay it's not deformed or something like that so it survived this temperature and basically it was around 50 degrees Celsius 49.3 according to this thermometer and now let's repeat the stringing test but now with the dried filament using the same g-code it's promising so far looking good Printing is finished and I think the difference is quite obvious. So even if this new printing is not so perfect, I can see few strings here, but it is significantly better than this one. So the effect of the drying is quite obvious. Uh, but it looks like it would be better if I would left it in a filament dryer, maybe one or two hours more. And now the conclusions. Well, something what I expected when I saw the specifications. Uh, you saw if it is able to dry PETG, then it is able to dry all those popular filaments, uh, except nylon. For nylon we need at least 70 degrees Celsius, because this drying has uh, two stages. First we need higher temperature to force the moisture to, to the surface of the material, and then we need dry environment, uh, and then it will evaporate. But uh, it is enough uh, to keep it dry, let's say after you take it out from the package, and let's say in the factory it was quite dry or maybe you, want, you can dry it a little bit in an oven on like 70 or 80 degrees Celsius but be careful if the spool can survive this temperature and then you can keep it in the filament dryer during the printing and of course there are always space for improvements uh, about the temperature well actually if you don't print nylon in that case this temperature is enough uh, pay attention if you dry a PLA, don't use it on level 3 because one thing is the temperature inside of the air and the other is the temperature of the heating plate so the bottom of the spool is very near that so definitely I don't, don't dry PLA on level 3 for example. It would be good to see some kind of thermal insulation here in that case uh, less energy would be needed to keep this temperature inside and I'm quite sure that most of the users would like to see some kind of adjustable timer about the size, uh, I'm not sure why they uh, limit it to 67 millimeters the size because 10-15% uh, of my spools cannot fit in this filament dryer. It is great that it has uh, a fan and also dedicated space for the desiccant uh, but it's a little bit uncomfortable for use. I cannot turn this filament dryer upside down because in this case the rollers will fall out from their uh, place so I have to insert or change the silica gel in this position. Not a big deal, but it's good to mention. Now about these rollers, uh, mine arrived with only one cylinder. I just uh, create a second one, uh, probably some rare case. Uh, not a big deal. Basically one more positive uh, thing I want to mention again, that this is one of the quietest filament dryer, which includes the fan. So this is big plus for me and uh, I measure that and this data goes to my website next to the others so they are comparable with other filament dryers. So this was my experience with Erewhon Snail filament dryer box. Uh, thank you for watching, happy drying and printing.